Hey there, this is Matt, and what about you another review of a film that Antoline Alpha had sent me called Lake Mungo, part of the After Dark Horror Fest, A Films to Die For, the fourth time they did it. I don't know if they still do this, because I've, I'm not a big fan of the Eight Films to Die For stuff. I would say the best one I saw was one called The Deaths of Ian Stone. I really enjoyed that one. And I actually did not mind Butterfly Effect 3. I thought for a part three of that, that was okay. I liked it more than the second one. But there's others I saw I didn't care for, like Mulberry Street. I think that's the one where people turn to like rat people or some shit. But Lake Mundo, despite this cover, it looks like a fucking Blumhouse movie or a movie like The Apparition. And not the case at all. This is false advertising. Because it, I, I wouldn't even call this a horror movie, even though it's horror fest. I mean, it's more of a, it's a mockumentary, aka a fate documentary, where it's mystery, drama, with a little bit of paranormal, but there, there's meant to be a bit creepy, but there's no jump scares, thankfully. There's no family being in danger. It's more a story about grief and overcoming grief. And this family of three in Australia, or at least this was an Australian production, and it's a teen kid, a mom, and a dad. And they're being filmed. And it's, it's like a fake documentary. And I thought it was very well done. I thought all the actors are very natural. So it felt real. It kind of reminded me, tone and slow burn wise, of a film called Population Zero. Well, that that's a movie I want to get in my collection and rewatch. If I ever do, I'll do a review for that. Just that has an interesting premise to it. I did like this as a slow burn fake documentary style, and I like I like when they do this kind of stuff because. A lot of times I just misconstrued with found footage, and it's not found footage. It's like the tunnel is kind of found footage, but it's a fake documentary as well, which is people being interviewed about it. And I love the tunnel. Found footage is just, boom, there's the footage, and usually it's a downbeat ending. This is, again, this family being interviewed, and you see through interviews, and some video footage of the teen kid's sister and the parent's daughter named Alice Palmer which she goes missing and you see news of the missing teen and one thing leads to another and you find out that she's drowned and they did a nice job establishing this as a documentary and it's a good looking film too. They have some nice shots of the landscape of the area and the town, especially at night time. Uh, they interview the girl's friends and parents and family. Uh, before they find out she drowned, there's a nice reaction because they would leave the porch light on. And then you're asked, why would you do that? And he says, just in case she comes home, I guess. So it was a nice reaction from the guy who played the dad. And then the body's found, they ID the body, and strange little things start happening where the mom starts having nightmares, and the dad has, he describes the event that happened where he saw this ghost of his daughter, and his family found him crying uncontrollably. And the son is getting into photography, and they start seeing the sister and photos that he's taking. And like the shadow figure passing through the door. And they contact the psychic guy and they have this little seance. And then these things happen and they find out that the son fates some of the stuff in the photos. And he describes how he did it. And he said he was doing this to hopefully get his parents to resume the body and to help his mom out. Like maybe if I did this crazy thing, the mom will look at the body, because she never looked at the body, the dad ID the body, and that the mom would have closure. 
And it sounds like a shitty thing that the kid did, but I like that they, the way the the actor who played the teen kid, the way it was done, it didn't make me hate the kid. It made me feel sorry for everybody. And you get the idea that the family's not doing too well, and they're kind of being pulled apart. But not in the cliche, how dare you constant yelling and making them assholes, but done more reasonable way. Like, I see what's going on type of thing. Subtle, but, you know, it worked. And then you find out there's more to the story. And before I get into more spoilers, which I'll say now, I like this film because it was an interesting story. It was an interesting mystery that made me want to know what would happen next. Everything felt natural. The actors didn't feel like actors. It felt real. If you're going to do a fake documentary, make it seem real. And I thought this seemed real. And it has some nice, subtle, creepy moments, especially when you find out what's going on. I thought, wow, that's a little bit different, a little bit interesting. And I like that they didn't go to many of the typical, like, jump steers and... It wasn't the fucking last broadcast where all of a sudden the guy doing interviews, he's now killing people and he's filming himself. Oh, fuck this movie. With the shittiest narrator make anyone fall the fuck asleep. It would make Speedy Gonzalez fall asleep, this fucking narrator last broadcast. Fuck me. This was much better than last broadcast. I hate that fucking movie. But I thought it was a well-told, slow burn, well-acted story. But again, horror, it's very misleading, especially this cover. Maybe that's why, sadly, this writer and director did not go on to do more, Joel Anderson. And it's sad. He should have. This was 2008. He hasn't done anything in 10 years. Because it's weird. We're in 2018 now. He's done nothing in 10 years, and that's bullshit. Just there's some... The director did a good job with this. Writing, directing it. He does not deserve to never work again. But fucking Brian Johnson, whose last name is fucking synonymous with dick, because he's a dickhead, is going to get three more Star Wars movies, and he did a shitty Star Wars movie. But this guy does a good, easygoing, subtle... Interesting story, well acted, a little bit of a creepy movie, which I'll take this or any of the paranormal fuckivity movies, because this is more interesting of a story. And those got like seven of them, or whatever the fuck, how many they went. I stopped at three, because I had enough. I didn't like the first one, I did the others a chance. There's some nice moments, but the movie itself, no. So. But this guy can't work again? Bullshit. My dick. Fuck, it pisses me off. So, for those who want to see it, if you don't like it, you don't like it. I think it's worth at least one shot. And like I was saying, I think this marketing may be fucked him up because this marketing looks like another shitty The Apparition or whatever the, all those, those fucking movies that went in the theaters when it's not at all. Bad cover. Misleading. This is more of a mystery drama. Almost like an episode of Unsolved Mysteries type of thing. Almost. Not quite, but... Because it does get solved, but... That's sort of... I guess what you see on TV. I don't watch a lot of them, but... When they're telling tales of ghosts and people are interviewed and, and things of that nature. But like I was saying, you find out more about the story. Again, going more into spoilers. For those who want to see the film, check it out. For those who don't, feel free to keep watching. He finds out that while the teen kid goes on with the psychic on consultations just to get out of the house, and the family just got out of the house after they found out the kid fate this stuff, they left the video footage. And they looked at it again. And they found out that maybe things are really happening. Because they find an image 
on one of the tapes. I was like, wait a minute, he wasn't even here, and what's the deal? I don't think the parents were away, but he was away, so he didn't mess with it. And then it's like, well, let's look at the old footage. And then they found another person in their house from before, and it was a neighbor. And then they, he was, the neighbor was like searching through their daughter's room. And then when they looked in their daughter's room, they found a safe and they found a videotape, which showed that the neighbor's wife and husband neighbor had sex with this couple's daughter. So, Alice Palmer had sex with these neighbors, which is a wife and, and husband, and it was filmed. And that guy snuck into their house to try to get the tape. And then they left, and they can't find the neighbors. Then you get another bombshell. The psychic actually talked with their daughter months before, and she was gone about... She was scared, and something bad's going to happen. And the reason they never told them was because of the daughter wanting confidentiality. And then the third thing was someone shows the family this video footage from a trip the friends had gone on to this place called Lake Mungo. And she seemed out of it and something then something happened the other people were happy and she wasn't she was bearing something so the family went to Lake Mungo and they did it up and they find this these trinkets of hers and her phone and I said like, well why did she bury this stuff and what happened well on that night at Lake Mungo with her friends she went off by herself and she filmed an image of her own ghost which was an omen dead body that she would look like months later a dead drowned body of herself she saw what would become her own dead body it was like an omen for what was to come and that's why she was so depressed before that and I guess that then you think about, oh, well, maybe that's why she had sex with her neighbors, and that's why she did all this stuff, because she had this feeling of doom, and she didn't know how to... Even the interviewer asked, well, if she went up and told you, how do you think she would describe it? And the dad goes, I don't know. She would just say it was a ghost. I thought, well, that was a creepy notion of not the typical, ah, monster demon going to kill you, but it was just an omen in a weird way of vision of her own impending death. And it was subtle, and it wasn't overblown, it wasn't over-exaggerated with over-the-top score, music, loud noises. It was like, oh, shit. Huh. And then that's where the family started bonding together after seeing that stuff. Even the mom goes, we went home and things felt different and calm. Maybe she wanted us to know what all happened before she could leave. And that's what you did, that this is a story about grief and the grief process and you see that the family, the three of them, are now laughing at dinner together, and the son and dad are going off with their dog and running, and the three of them have decided to move on, literally as well as figuratively. I thought it was a nice story that uh, had a nice heart to it at the end of the film. It was a good human drama story. As well as a little bit of mystery and paranormal to it. Uh, the score was subtle and atmospheric. The It was a good story that was well told. And I was surprised by this movie. I rather liked it. 
Because again, the, the advertising just made it seem like another shitty possession movie or something, or fucking... I'm trying to think of all those fucking movies, like, another fucking... What the hell was that one called? I keep saying The Apparition, but there's other movies too, like The Unborn. You know, those fucking movies. But it's not like that at all, so shitty advertising can hurt a movie. I really believe that it's the shitty advertising that hurt this film. First off, After Dark doesn't do a lot of good movies. Second off, this cover sucks. Dick. And it's sad, this director never did anything again. I think this is a this is a good movie. So I'm glad that uh, Antoline Alpha, thank you for that. I mean, granted, I was not a fan of It Comes a Night at all. And then I did see this film, and I'm kind of, eh. It's not going to be a rant, but I was, I was disappointed with this one. But I did really enjoy this flick. Your props to it. So thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.